Welcome to Breakthrough. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Hi everybody, uh, Pastor Everett. Um, welcome to Breakthrough. Really excited about uh, what God is doing. I uh, want to jump right into the Word tonight. Matthew uh, 9, verse 17 tonight. And uh, be reading from the King James Version. And uh, uh, I'm going to just start reading. Uh, Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break and the wine runneth out. The bottles perish, but they put new wine in new, into new bottles, and both are preser preserved. I want to I highlight two words uh, tonight, perish and preserved. I want to talk to you about that, uh, about new or old. Let me just pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you open up our eyes, our ears, our heart, that we can see, hear, know, and understand something new from the Word of God tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I, uh, new or old, and uh, I, I think another way to say that is uh, routine or change. <laughs> and uh, I've been talking a lot about change lately. And uh, the, the, I guess one of the problems with change is that we, we really, if, if we're really honest, we really don't want to change. Uh, we, we like to do what we always do, and uh, we get stuck in habits or routines. And, and when we get saved, I mean really get saved, uh, something has to die. I'm going to tell you that right now. And so when we talk about the word perish, uh, I, I, I want you to think about letting go or releasing, okay? And, and so if, if, you're, if, if you really want change to happen, I, I've said this many times. I, if you've heard, ever heard me speak, you'll, you'll probably hear me say it uh, many times. But until you're really ready to release something old, you'll, you can never truly have something new. You can look at new stuff. You can even act like it. But, but it's the letting go, the risk that we take of letting go. Because what, what we carry with us, what we hold on to, has formed... Um, who I am. It, it, it's just part of me. And, 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 and I'm telling you right now, love, I've been married for a long time. And I found out that really true love is about letting go of a little bit of, of, of you almost every day. And, and the more of me that I'm willing to release, the more new things that I can begin to experience in my life or in a relationship. And it, especially when we start to think about our relationship as a Christian is with a living God. It's with a God who is alive. And he, He's so exciting to be in relationship with that we must come to a place where we we're really we want to experience more of that. And, and to experience more or, or, or a, a, a fresh revelation of that experience is really comes down to releasing, okay? Letting go. Uh, Romans 8, verse 13 and 14 says something really powerful. It says, uh, For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. And I'm going to stop right there for a moment. Most of us as Christians, we get saved and we, we, we take on our, uh, our walk with Christ and we live it out carnally. In other words, it's, it's how we feel, what we see, what we can understand. I'm very guilty of that myself. Uh, sometimes I'll open the Bible and begin to, to uh, uh, on the surface, begin to understand the text or the context and not, not, not leave room for the revelation, right? Not leave, leave room for the Spirit to begin to speak to me. And... And it's so true as we walk with God that in the context of our life, the greatest change is going to happen when I stop looking at what I've always looked at, stop feeling what I've always felt, and look, look again uh, for the deeper message. Look again and say, uh, God, I don't understand why it is that I always feel this way, and say, God, show me. And then when he shows you, 
change something, okay? Allow, allow that knowledge, allow that revelation to, to spring alive into your life and change something. Because only when I move past whatever it is that I have been struggling with, I, I'm not going to tell you, I, I'm going to tell you right now. Sometimes when we pray and say, God, deliver me of this situation. God, God will do that. He will deliver the, uh, the, whether it's an addiction or even a bad habit. He, he can deliver you from that, and you can immediately walk away and to never, ever want that again. <laughs> I've talked to a lot of people who have quit smoking, and, and most of them would admit that the, the very smell of a cigarette would make them want one. They, they don't go get one because they quit. But I'm going to tell you, God has the ability to take even the desire of what you used to have and change it. And make it something new. Uh, your life needs to be brand new. So, so if you you live after the flesh, you're going to die. All of us know that one day we will die. Uh, there, there's, there's, there's none of us that are going to be here forever. Okay, so one day we're all going to be somewhere else. And so that's why this verse is so powerful. But if you live through the Spirit, uh, come on, go with me just a little bit. I'm going a little deeper. But if you live through the Spirit, capital S, not little s. Little s being my spirit, the big S being the spirit of God, mean, meaning that I got saved and now I am the temple of the living God. So the spirit of God dwells in me. I become the priest of the temple. In other words, I have to begin to monitor, begin to, to, to take notice of the spirit inside of me. Like when he says no or when he says yes or when he says uh, when I start to worship him and I can feel the presence of God come then I, I know that the presence of God has come into my life to change something, to move me into another, another realm, another uh, direction. So, so if, if ye, <laughs> ye shall, but if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, okay, so mortify means to kill off the, the deeds of the flesh. So sometimes uh, there are things in our life that we must we must just let go, <laughs> take them around back, take, take the, you know, that's it. Not, no longer going to do that anymore. And, and, and we do that through the power of the spirit that is in us. Ye shall live for as many. I like verse 14. It says, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So my identity changes because I am now led, not by my feelings, not by what I think, not by what I know, but I'm led by the spirit of God. That's a clear sign that we are sons, okay? And we can begin to walk that out with new boldness, okay? And so, so it's proof, okay? So, so someone might say to you, prove it, okay? And I'm going to tell you that the, the proof of sonship is in how you walk out your life. It's, how you, it's who's leading your life. See, I'm, I'm led by the Spirit of God because I am the Son, amen? And so, uh, uh, the proof uh, it, the proof of sonship is uncovered in who you t who you take direction from. <laughs> let me let me just say, let me break that down for you just a little bit. The, the direction as a Christian comes from the Word of God. It's from the Word of God. It's from the Bible. Okay. So when I need to know what to do, I must go back to the Word of God. So then I will know the direction, okay? And so it's, it's so powerful. In James 4 and verse 17, there's, there's this really great thought. I, one time I preached a message at a, at a, at, and it was quite a few years ago, but I, I came into a, 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 a church and I, I preached this message. And I, I said, from whence come, this, it just says from where do, the, where do wars and fightings come? And, and then James keeps on talking and he says, most of, almost always what you're fighting for is because it's something that you desire or something that you want. It's, it's a lust. He calls it lust. And, and so we see, we see it with our eyes. We desire it, okay? And we begin to walk towards that and we can begin to drool or we begin to whatever. And we end up uh, getting into trouble, okay? And often we, we get into trouble and, and then, and then uh, J James even goes a little deeper than that. He says, you're an adulterer or an adulteress because you have, 
You have taken your eye off of the one, taken your eye off of Jesus, taken your eye off of the Word of God, and start to look at other things. And you begin to come to a place where, 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 where there is, you can't have friendship with something or, or take, take something into your life, into your walk with God, and expect God to, to be happy. Because it even goes a little further and it says that, uh, it, it's, it says that, that the spirit in us lusts us with, it has envy uh, against that. So there's a, there's a, there's a em, enmity, it, the word says. There's a, a contrast, there's a difference between, between who we're supposed to be and who we actually are. And then we get all this, this fighting going on in our life. We get all this struggle going on. And the struggle really is just simply from us not wanting to listen to what the Word of God is saying to us. In verse 7 of that same chapter, James 4, verse 7, I've preached this a lot, to, to, I've preached this before, but it says, Submit yourself, therefore, to God. <laughs> <laughs> it's so powerful to think about when I got saved, I, I came to a place where I said, I, I came and I got on my knees. Most of us got on our knees. You don't have to get on your knees to get saved, but we submitted our life to God. We said, God, I, I, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. And then what happens is uh, it, we, we, we forget about that because we, we begin to, to fight and get this, this other thing going on. So uh, resist the devil, it says, and he will flee from you. <laughs> and I think we're we're rebuking the devil, and we're 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 casting him out, but yet we're still walking the same way we've always walked. And and we we there, this conflict in us, right? There there really is a conflict in all of us, and we really have a struggle. I, at least I'll admit that I have a, a struggle. I struggle submitting. To the will of God, submitting to the Word of God, allowing the Word of God to be all powerful in my life, to to allow Him to tell me yes or no. You know, uh, uh, I, I I've gotten to the place now where if I'm going to make a decision, I'll 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 just stop and I'll say, God, is this is this what you want me to do? Because if he if he if he says yes, if I can feel the presence of God on it, and I make the choice, I know that God will provide for me. I don't have to worry about anybody else providing for me. I don't have to worry about what's going to happen tomorrow or the next day because I know that God is with me. Amen. I know that this is part of his plan for my life. Uh, <laughs> see, see, most of us are, are we go to church. Uh, let me just, let me just say it like, I'm, I, I gotta, I'm running out of time. I, I have so much I want to say. And I have so little time. I wish I could talk to you for an hour about this. But most of us, we have this consumer mentality. Like, I want a glass of water. You know, I'm so thirsty. I need a glass of water. And Jesus is saying, just like he said in John, the fourth chapter, I, I think it's somewhere around the 14th verse or so. He said, he said, I want to be the spring in you. That uh, a well that springs up in you, so so that you don't have to worry about running out. See, see, we have a a mentality that says, I just I just want my I want my I want what I want I need I need water, and in that story, and uh, uh, the woman left her water pot. She left a container that she had came to fill with water because she she had it been re, it had been replaced with something great. <laughs> And see, I think that, that we, the world needs Christians. It needs somebody that has a relationship with God, that, that has the spring in them, that has the, the well bur bursting out of them, that has, that has a flow going on in their life. See, I'm, I'm not running to church looking for a consumer, uh, the, the, the right worship song. The pastor better preach the right message. I hope he, hope he has the good, good message. I hope he studied hard. I hope he can touch my heart. See, I'm not going there to be as a consumer. I'm going there as a well to give. Amen? And uh, that, I, I just want to say this, right? Jesus is gonna, wants to install a well in you. And, and I, I want to give you a declaration. I refuse to be induced. Not seduced, induced, okay? By a substitute power. <laughs> When Jesus is the true source, okay? He's the never-ending spring in my life, amen? He's the never-ending spring in my life. Let me just say, talk to you about preserved. 
preserved. You know, caning, when I was a kid, we used to, uh, we, there's not a lot of people maybe that actually do a lot of canning nowadays, but, but when I was growing up, there was a lot, of, a lot of people, that's what they did. They spent a long time, and we used to make jelly because um, we had a grapevine in the backyard, and so we would make jelly, and, and uh, that's just what we did. And uh, I found out, though, when you can stuff, you know, the, the, the container is not as important as the content. <laughs> and and, and, and I, that's, that's a message right there in itself. I, I could just drop the mic and walk away right there. So, so we're, we always look at the container, but Jesus is inside of us. The content inside of us is more important than the container. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, uh, I moved uh, quite a few times in my, in my life, and uh, I found out that uh, I, I keep boxes, just probably like everybody else, and, and I take the boxes, and I, I move them from one place to another. <laughs> I never look in the boxes. I, whatever's in there is probably important. Probably not. But but it's important to me. So I'm I'm preserving some some junk, okay, some stuff that I never need. <laughs> Are you following me? I wonder what we preserve in our life that we really don't need. I wonder what we could let go of so that we can actually have some good content in there. Amen. <laughs> Why are we ask why are we trying to hold on to what God is asking us to release? No wonder no wonder why we're struggling. See see because this is this is such a true thing. We're struggling fighting against God. That's what happens. We begin to fight with God so that we can have our way, our will, our our perspective, our our vision, our hope, our dream and God is asking us to release all of those things so that we can have His will, His, His way. See, that's why we struggle so hard, because we're fighting with God. And there's a story about this in Acts uh, 5, verse 38 through 42. And uh, this, this high priest, this guy, he was standing in front of the council, and he said, he said some really wise words. He said, uh, <clears throat> refrain from these guys because the, 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 the apostles were standing in front of them and they were going to uh, do whatever to them because they were preaching Jesus. And he said unto them, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to nothing. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it. Lest happily ye be found even to fight against God. And that, that's such a, a, a big thought, such a great, uh, a great big thought in my own life. How, much, how many times, how much time have I wasted fighting God's will in my life? And, and I, I just think it's, 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 let me just bring it, break it down just a little bit more for you. What is it that motivates you to be you. What is it that you are always doing? What, what is it that motivates you to do what you do? And, and I, I, I even have thought about this myself just in the last uh, week or so. Why, why, why am I doing what I'm doing? And is it, is it to be whatever? Is it, is it for that reason? Is it for what, what is the reason? And, and as I contemplated those things, I have to come to a place where I, I'm willing to admit to you tonight that I am here. I am doing what I do because God has called me to it. I can't run from it. I can't hide from it. I have to come to a place where I'm willing to, to stand up in the face of whatever it is that's going on and say, you know what, I, it's not lust. It's not a, a, a vision that God has not given me. I'm not doing what I'm doing for those reasons. I'm doing it because God has called me. Amen. And because he has called me, I stand before you today. And you know what? There are times, there are sometimes when 
I feel like I preach really good. There's other times I feel like I haven't preached good enough. But I know that in the middle, between those two things, I, I stand and I present myself, not only to you, but to God. I preach to Him. I don't preach necessarily to you. I preach to Him. He's called me. He's with me. He's for me. He's moving through me. And I'm the well. Amen? I'm the well. And, I, and, and I, I'm, I, there's never going to be a day, there will never be a day, that I will not have enough. Amen? I will not be enough because He is enough in me. Amen? So what is it that motivates you? I think that's a question that we should all ask each other and ourselves. I think, I think sometimes in a, when you start thinking about accountability, that we ask ourselves and then we, do we really want to know the answer? I, I guess that's a good, a good question. What is it that motivates me? And, and, and am I willing to change that motivation? Am I willing to move out of the box that I've created for myself? Am I willing to step over and into something new? And, and so let me just pray about that with you. Father, Lord, we just thank you tonight, Lord, for your word. We thank you for this time together, Lord. And I know that this, this message is uh, kind of a hard message, Lord. But Lord, I, I just pray, Lord, that you stir in us, Lord, a, a, a eyesight. And, and Lord, that we can begin to understand the motivation behind the reason we do what we do. And Lord, that we can begin to have boldness, Lord, to know that something has to die so that something else can be preserved, Lord. And so, Lord, we, we, we release those things. Lord, help us to mortify, help us to get rid of things in our life. Help us, Lord, to understand that, that only by releasing that we can ever preserve what you need preserved in our lives, Lord. And, and Lord, just touch us right now from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. And Lord, we just shake off some things right now. We shake off things, Lord. And Lord, we repent of things right now, Lord. And Lord, we submit our life to you. And we ask you, Lord, in Jesus' name, to help us. Amen and amen. We're really excited about what God is doing. And uh, I, I, if you would drop us a message, uh, connect with us, go to our website at mybreakthrough.online. Uh, we would love for you to subscribe to our YouTube, like us on Facebook. Uh, uh, you, can, you can go around and shop, you know, check out our website. We have a lot of cool things going on there. And uh, we look forward to seeing you. And if you're in Rockford, we would love for you to be part of one of our services. We're at 415 North Church Street in Rockford on Sundays at 10 a.m., uh, Tuesdays at 7, and Fridays at 7. Uh, Tuesdays uh, is for prayer. Um, and also on Friday we have uh, Bible study and we have uh, youth service. So we're excited about what God is doing. We look forward to connecting with you and seeing you real soon. God bless. Have a great night.